everybody. This is the Vanguard. It's one of the larger ships that I've built. Most ships that I build are quite small, and this one actually has a crew of eight and needs it. It's a long-range bombardment and fleet control ship, meaning that it's full of communications and these long cannons. It's got two of these turrets, one on the top and one on the bottom. It's got an escape pod and two very, very basic landing pods. You know, places for people to land. But it's not a carrier. It's intended mostly for uh, bombardment and uh, using these laser antennas and the built-in antennas inside the ship to keep track of the situation and keep everyone under control. It has the ability to defend itself in combat, but mostly uh, those Gatling turrets are for shooting down incoming missiles and torpedoes, not for fending off bombers. As you can see, the front is glassed. This is not a ship that is extremely durable. It is... Um, if, if, the, if the glass is destroyed, it's not a big deal. The ship is fairly durable where it counts, but it's definitely not intended for pitched combat. Now if we look, we can see that the ship has uh, several AIs running in tandem here. Let's take a look. My new boy, Tyr, he is drawing the ship for us. And he'll keep track of any damage that happens. I've advanced him a little bit, and now he actually will doodle a special logo for exactly where we are, so you can get an idea of which way the ship is actually facing. And so here you can see it's going to pop up right there. So you can tell where we are relative to the rest of the ship. That said, it looks like it's flipped on the x-axis, so uh, I can work that out later. Freya is uh, just keeping track of what batteries are charging and not charging. As you can see, she's trying to keep the 132 batteries peaked. And there's a master reboot switch. I've got a couple more AIs in the work, but none of them are actually doing anything right now. And this bridge is a fun mess of cables for kicks. Two uh -oh. turret control gun stations. And then out here we have an oxygen plantation. Crew quarters are over here in the light blue. Eight crew, and a place for them to sit if they want to sit in the quiet. There's also a bathroom back here where they can get ready for their day. This does not require an AI, it's just a sensor. On the other side is the crew uh, canteen where they can get a bite to eat and uh, play some ping pong. There is an escape pod, as I mentioned. I awkwardly painted some of this not red. When did that happen? So this escape pod will vent the area if you decide to go get it, so obviously I'm not gonna go do that right now. We come around this way, and we're in the general area where you can hang out. There are some stuff to do over there. There's stuff to do over there, stuff to do over here, and a bathroom with actual toilets rather than just showers. And there is an airlock that you can leave through if you want. It's an invisible airlock, meaning it can be opened as fast as you can walk through. It'll just take care of itself. Now, all of this said, this ship is an extremely mobile vessel. It has these massive, massive rear engines. Uh, now, what sort of power does it take to run those rear engines? Well, a lot more than the two large generators the ship is actually equipped with. In fact, the two large generators would be hard-pressed to run one of these side engines. How fast is this ship? Well, if you keep your eye in the lower right-hand corner... Vroom. It's as fast as a heavy fighter. <laughs> so it has no problem staying out of combat when it needs to stay out of combat and keeping up with the fleet when it needs to stay when it needs to keep up. Right now Freya is keeping our reactor at nicely peaked at around 90% and uh, she'll just keep the batteries charging as as best she can. Now if I were to switch back into this internal view here you can see that Freya is uh, trying to charge the batteries as possible, <clears throat> but with 123 of them being drawn from, 
it's hard for her to keep up. So over time, if we keep holding down the forward button, we will eventually burn through all of our batteries. But it will take about 15 minutes. So it's, uh, it's a pretty, pretty good deal, really. This is very well managed, and, and she's doing a great job here. Now let's see if we can get her to panic. Emergency power activated. Now she's running every frame, which will give her a lot more control over what batteries charge and what batteries uh, don't. Reactor output. Now we're back to normal speed and uh, reactor output. So this is a ship built specifically to be high performance in an unusual role. It is capable of controlling an entire fleet and also assisting that fleet with bombardment. It doesn't require very much uranium and it doesn't require uh, a whole bunch of reactors. It runs close to peak at all times because Freya is intelligent. It can keep track of the damage it takes and the state of its ship thanks to Tyr. Now I've thought about changing Tyr, uh, Tyr's drawing algorithm some. I can make him draw different, uh, different sigils. So you know, if she, if, if he finds an engine, he could draw a specific kind of of uh, ASCII art, and if he finds a battery, he can draw a specific kind of ASCII art. But the problem is that it needs to be able to be read at a heartbeat, and so I'm just going to go with the defaults for now. Also, it's very, very hard to get these things to line up. Uh, this is. This is not a mono-spaced font, um, so it's not very good for ASCII art. All right, that's that. I hope you have enjoyed this little video. I'm seriously thinking that I'm going to be putting this on the Steam Workshop. Um, I'm probably also going to be putting up a, a modified version from when you last saw it, a modified version of the um, longbow, because it's proved to be pretty useful and pretty strong. <laughs>